when the whole Balenciaga kids campaign thing broke and a lot of people on social media were really going at Kim Kardashian specifically and basically forcing her and other members of her family to come out and make some sort of statement to disavow Balenciaga for that very tasteless and crude and maybe tone deaf kids campaign. I didn't think it was entirely sadistic. I don't think it was all the way, you know, um, you know, all the way a sigh up for child molestation as some of the people on the right were thinking, but it definitely was distasteful and definitely was something that they probably had to answer for and apologize for and make right for sure. But is it means for them to be permanently cancelled? Cancelled? I'm sorry, I don't think so. But still, I think a lot of people had some interesting and somewhat nuanced opinions about it. But I felt like the demand to have Kim Kardashian comment on it was pretty well placed. I don't feel like you should want to demand anything for celebrity. They, they, they shouldn't want. They shouldn't need to answer for anything they do. But I feel like with somebody like a Kim who's trying to at the moment it feels like she's trying to LARP as a single mom of four who's working her ass off and running a business and running a household. That whole kind of LARP and cosplay that she's doing at the moment, I think it's adequate and fair to ask that person who's pretending to be a single mom, hey, if this brand that you're working with, your close relationship with, is involved in such a dodgy activity as kind of, you know, maybe exploiting kids or putting them in harm's way in these kind of crazy campaigns you should really have something to say about it, especially if you're trying to LARP as a single mom. And it took her ages to come out with a comment. And when she did come out with a comment, she essentially said nothing. She essentially said, hey, um, I clearly don't, you know, condone, you know, anything involving kids that puts kids in harm's way or anything could involve in abuse or whatnot. Um, and I'm taking stock of my relationship with Balenciaga and that was it. But there was no distancing in terms of saying hey this is the end i'm not going to work with them anymore nothing along those kind of lines is like i'm going to leave the door open we're going to have an investigation internally and we're going to get to the bottom of it and make sure this doesn't happen again something vague and stupid like that and i remember the time when i was listening to it i thought to myself that's an interesting and a weird position to have because i would have thought to myself like i know these guys are soulless and don't really have any principles or morals because I think in general to be as successful as they are as family you can't really be tied down to silly and kind of frivolous things as principles morals and ethics if you want to be the Kardashian it doesn't necessarily exist but I would have thought like many people when they have kids there's this common line everyone have right? Right, the kids changed me now I'm serious about x y and z now I'm not taking no prisoners I'm everything I do for my children even if it's just like um even if it's just uh, things that you say to appear like a good person, I feel like a lot of people generally do have that switch. Once they have a, they're a kid, once they have a family, suddenly things start to be, uh, you know, suddenly the focus becomes lasered, lasered in. There's no distractions. Um, they're very clear in what they want to do and what they don't want to do. Um, there's no kind of frivolous activities. Any, any time free they have, they spend with their kids, all this sort of stuff, right? It becomes that sort of switch that goes on in their heads. But also you think sometimes with some women in Hollywood, there's a kind of protective side of things where it's like anything that concerns kids or any kind of things that can be viewed a bit dodgy, they'll just completely cross it out. There's no time for it. And they'll kind of draw a line in the sand. Like, this is where I am and this is what I kind of stand on. And I would have thought, me naively, oh, okay, this is where Kim's going to draw a line in the sand and really solidify this LARP that she's doing as a single mom of four. Instead, she didn't. She made excuses and kind of danced around it. And I feel like this clip here taken from the Angie Martinez interview that Kim did recently is another one that kind of highlights just how disconnected from reality these people are and just the lack of principles, morals, ethics and the ability to draw a line in the sand and say, here's where I stand. There is no such line in the sand. As soon as money is involved, as soon as prestige is involved, marketing and all this sort of stuff is involved, lines in the sand get blurred or there just generally isn't one. It's very loose. It's very vague. It's very flexible. It's very opaque. Let's just call it that way. And this is kind of Kim Kardashian's impression of the whole thing. And I thought it was very, very, very funny considering everything that happened. So I think the clip is somewhere around the 1528 mark, if I'm not mistaken. But this is a clip taken from the Angela Martinez interview. I really recommend checking it out because it's fascinating to hear her speak and kind of, you know, try and sound like somewhat of a normal person because, you know, 
when you watch the first minute or so of it, I'm not sure if it's the editing, but she doesn't blink, it feels like. She's just like a stone face. It feels like there might be a little bit of video editing software going on and the hollowing out of her cheeks. I'm not too sure if that's me or Cordy or somebody else, but hey, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. And it just generally just feels like you're talking to a bit of a cyborg. There's not much kind of soul or emotion coming out of her, which is maybe how her personality is, as, you know, as a person, who knows. But I thought this interpretation that she had of why people responded negatively to her Balenciaga comments was super super interesting because she completely missed the mark but let's let's play the clip and you can hear what she says and I'll give you my opinion on the other side and you asked me about like the grace Mm -hmm. I one day my kids will thank me Mm -hmm. for not sitting here and like bashing their dad when I could Mm -hmm. you know like of course all the crazy shit that's you know, not just me, it like, it kills me for my family. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, I can handle it. But like, they'll thank me. Mm -hmm. And I will be, I'll privately answer anything that they want to know. But it's not my place anymore to really like jump in. And sometimes, obviously, I have to, but then I wonder if that was the real reason why the divorce wasn't as protracted as it probably seemed it was going to be because i felt like kanye was firing lawyers every single week it felt like and then suddenly it just got you know pushed over the line and it got signed and everything got you know done you know eyes dotted t's crossed pretty quickly i wonder if that was one of the reasons why like she just wanted rid of the association with kanye as soon as possible so that she didn't have to be his spokesperson like or his translator oh no what Kanye meant was this because that's what she did when they were together together right there'll be a lot of her trying to clarify certain points of view or whatnot but as soon as that happened you've really if ever heard her speak directly about him or even mention his name that's the interesting part you don't really hear her even mention his name you hear her say the kid's dad but you don't ever say yeah he can't actually like, she, she kind of steers away from even talking about him in that regard so maybe that was the whole point of it let's just rush this divorce through get it over the line so i don't have to comment on anything more that he does because everything that he does that's negative it also puts smut on my name by default maybe who knows sometimes i'm like wait a minute i posted something in support of the jewish community or like even with the balenciaga thing it was like, everyone was like, why aren't you speaking out? Why aren't you speaking out? And I'm like, wait, I'm not in this campaign. I don't know what's happening. Let me like take a minute to research this. And then as soon as I- Honestly, what a dummy. No one was attacking you because you're not in the camp. We know you weren't in the campaign. That's pretty clear. The issue was you are one of the premier, maybe second only to Kanye. Maybe you and Kanye are joint one and two in terms of being the ambassadors for Balenciaga, right? Demna designed your Met Gala outfit, right? You are, have a very close relationship with Balenciaga to the point where your entire family are decked out with Balenciaga at, at certain times of the year. Same thing goes with Kanye. He legitimately spends a lot of money on that stuff. You think he said last of time of speaking, he spent, what is it, $4 million up to on flipping Balenciaga. So clearly, it would make sense why people would be coming to the one and two people who are associated with the brand and asking, hey, What's the deal with this stuff that's going on here with them allegedly promoting SA with children or whatnot or just putting children in weird situations with whatever bears that they were holding and the associ- and the kind of correlation to those bears and what they kind of represent, blah, 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 blah. It's within reason for them to ask somebody who's, again, trying to LARP as a single mum of four why they haven't made a public comment about something as um, sensitive and downright abhorrent why wouldn't you make a comment about it it's not because you're not in it it's because you're a mum it's because you're one of the faces of Balenciaga it makes complete sense people ask you that question but again it's this kind of willful obfuscation of the facts or maybe it's just weird clueless naivete or just inability to live in the actual real world that she generally doesn't understand but i'm not in the campaign it's like yeah we know you're not in the campaign but you're a mum and you're flipping the literally the brand ambassador for the for the flipping brand of course we'd ask you of course we'd ask you we're obviously not going to get anything substantial or anything of merit from your answers fair enough but it makes sense why people would ask you and wonder hey 
would she have a principled, nuanced, um, ethical reason to maybe draw a line in the sand and say, you know what, I'm not going to represent this, enough is enough? Or will she just make excuses and skirt around it as per usual? And we obviously got our answer. I saw what everyone was seeing on the internet and the reality of the situation. I completely spoke out and gave my my thoughts on child porn and completely denounced it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but because I didn't say, fuck you, Balenciaga, that's it people got mad at that. So it's like, I'm, they're mad if I, I don't speak out. <laughs> they're mad if I do speak out and if I don't cancel. Mm -hmm. They're just mad that if you don't cancel someone in today's society, then it, it's just can't, like, I know people talk about cancel culture and how crazy it is, yeah. and, but it's still happening. You know what's really funny? Doesn't Kim Kardashian sound a lot like Kanye West when she speaks about cancer culture? You could tell they've been together for a very long time, right? She's starting to sound a lot like him. And there's this bit in the beginning of this interview where she speaks about how she likes her houses to be minimal um, and to have, you know, and to be mono monochromatic and whatnot. And she likes her staff to wear a certain uniform um, in terms of the certain color palettes they wear. That's all Kanye West playbook. That's something that he has enforced in every place or every space that he's worked in from day dot. It's something he's always kind of been really sensitive to. Certain smells, lights, sounds. He's kind of very finicky and picky about these kind of things. But she didn't mention that's something that he got from Kanye, but definitely that's something that she got from him. Obviously, it maybe lends to her way of life because if you are if you have so much chaos and un, you know unpredictability outside of your home, it would make sense why you'd have want to have so much control and everything that goes on inside of your home. Fair enough. But anyway, go back to the council culture point of view. She has a very similar opinion to Kanye in cancer culture. And Kanye is a pressure of cancer culture. I feel like it's a little bit naive and a little bit infantile in that he doesn't think anybody should ever get cancelled ever. And that, and when I mean ev ever, I mean, you can see the evidence of it. He, you know, famously said Bill Cosby innocent. I would imagine he probably has some spicy takes concerning people like R. Kelly, Harvey Weinstein, he obviously put his arm around the shoulder of somebody like a I don't know, Marilyn Manson when he brought him out to Donda 2 concert. He obviously did the same thing with the baby and he was going through his issues with the comments that he made, I think at Coachella or whatnot, or I think maybe Rolling Loud. Um, he clearly has a very strange and kind of counter culture um, or count, yeah, kind of counter opinion of what counter culture should be and what it should kind of look like. And in his eyes, no one should be get, no one should be cancelled. Everyone should be forgiven, and all this sort of nonsense stuff that he has out there. My opinion of it is that I'm also along the lines of like I don't think a network or studios should be cancelling people. I think that heavy-handed approach of coming in and basically taking someone's ability to make money and be successful in the industry is crazy. And look at what happened to Six Nine. And like him or not, you know he's ab abhorrent. Obviously, what he did in terms of you know snitching on his fellow gang members and putting people behind bars and you know basically I think he snitched on maybe ten plus people or something crazy like that having actively taken part in crimes himself was egregious even if he thinks they smashed his baby mom or whatever i think it was totally unacceptable but that doesn't that did that shouldn't impact the decision making process that digital streaming platforms have in terms of hosting his music on their playlist that shouldn't be what it's about it should be about the music your stuff you do outside of music shouldn't affect their decision to put you on the playlist or to not promote your stuff on the pages and whatnot that's not how it should work it should never ever be like that and I feel like the fact that they do that, that is essentially what I don't like about cancel culture. They come in and they basically put you in a corner where you can't be successful. They've basically, you know, come in heavy handed and sort of cancel your, your, your career that way. And I've never really been a fan of that sort of stuff at all, zero. When it comes back to this point of view that she's having, Kim, no one was trying to, no one I don't think with any kind of mind or sane mind was sitting there thinking what Kim would say would result in Balenciaga being countered. That's not ever going to happen. We know that's going to be a fact. If the Balenciaga didn't get rid of them now, or they didn't, you know, adequately accept responsibility for the fact that they put that shoot together, because remember at first they tried to blame the production company, the photographer, everyone but themselves for that shoot, you know, being put together. If that was the case, when that happened, we know for sure that these celebrities or these brand ambassadors for Balenciaga, whatever they say isn't going to affect how Balenciaga does as a company, as a stock, or whatever maybe. That's never going to happen that way. But what we expected from Kim, I think, as regular humans, was that her being a mum, especially a new, a newly mum, whatever that term is, right? Um, 
you would expect her to maybe have a different view, maybe a more nuanced, or maybe even a more aggressive view. Like maybe because you spent so much time just looking after yourself and you being the center of the universe. Now you have all these children around you who you would imagine are the center of your universe. Now you'd be hyper, super protective of kids overall, just the idea of them, because you know how much you love yours. And you might be like, you know what? I know this is, this is irrational and this is emotional and I'm probably being a little bit knee jerk and reactive, but I'm going to draw my line in the sand and say, I'm not going to stand with Blin Sugar just because of what they've done with the kids thing. That's what we would expect it. Something a bit more, some strong words to come out off the back of that. But when you got that kind of vague, um, almost, you know, leave the door open kind of statement regarding her relationship with Balenciaga, let you know, oh, these people don't have souls. They don't have any morals, any principles, any ethics whatsoever. And as long as somebody's giving them the bag, they're willing to make any and every excuse to keep that relationship going. And that's what we basically saw. So it wasn't we wanted her to cancel Blanche Chagall. She's not got any power to cancel Blanche Chagall. Let's be real. But we just expected something more. We expected like the mum to come out of her. And I guess the mum doesn't exist when you're a Hollywood celebrity or when you're you know one of the biggest influencers or the biggest influencer in the world. There is no such thing as a mum. But it's still happening, and so it's never been my place. Yeah. The whole point of life is to make mistakes is to grow and to evolve and mm -hmm. to be better people obviously there can you make mistakes when it involves kids we all have to have line in the signs in it we all have to have them i said it myself my line in the sign is going to be rape my line in the sand will be self-involving children legitimately if some one of my friends did something involving murder i would legitimately have to ask the i'd have to ask for the details surrounding it because if it was, imagine if it was your friend murdered somebody, God forbid, who did something untoward to a relative of theirs. You would maybe have to understand where their fr mind frame was at and the situation, the circumstances around it. There might be some context to it that might make it somewhat justifiable because I'm a big believer in eye for an eye. I don't believe any of this sort of like forgiveness nonsense. I'm not in that game whatsoever, which is why for the most part, I leave people alone because I don't know how far I'm willing to go to to right the wrongs that have happened to me so i don't want anybody to get i mean i, I just don't want none of that energy around me so i just kind of leave everybody alone and i mind my business but when it involves kids and when it involves rape you're dead to me like we're never going to be friends again business is finished whatever it's done that's a wrap that's my line of sand everyone has theirs and it just sounds like to her <laughs> there's no line in the sand like everything is forgivable but they're not even christian It'll be, it'll be fine if it was a, from a religious point of view, right? The Bible teaches me that everybody is created equal under the eyes of God and everyone can be forgiven. And this idea that Jesus Christ was, you know, the one that would go to like whorehouses and try to, you know, save them and save, you know, homeless people in the street and drug dealers and criminals. Cool, whatever. Do your thing. But if you're just a regular everyday person and you happen to have a family and somebody in the family ends up doing something involving kids, or somebody you're doing business with ends up doing something untowards involving children, you would imagine that would be your line of sign to be like, I can't deal with you anymore. That is it. We are done. Because I know every time I think of anything involving kids, I can't help but picture my own kids. It's not something I think of, like, because me, I'm thinking of it abstractly. But if you have your own kids, I'd imagine, especially if it's the same thing if you have pets. As soon as you have your first pet, suddenly anything involving animal cruelty you get super sensitive about because you can't imagine anybody trying to harm such a defenseless love um love filled creature that that you kind of call a member of your family right somebody that you kind of um humanize in some way shape or form so how, how much more for children there is absolutely no place or an ounce to even play with anything with children mm -hmm. like any sexualization of children there's like not an ounce of that in our should be in our brains and in our society mm -hmm. i get that i couldn't have been more <laughs> clear on this is horrifying this is these this is disturbing i mean but unless they heard what they wanted to hear is like fuck you you're canceled don't you feel like though isn't there a part of you that feels like no matter what you say or no matter what you said, that there's just, there will be people who have a problem with whatever version of response you have to a Balenciaga or to something, you know, Kanye might say, or don't you feel like you can't win or? Totally, yeah. you, you definitely can't win. Yeah. No matter what you can't win, but yeah. I'll still be me. Yeah. I just think that my, 
this week was just really testing for me just because I'm in so much other shit that's not my shit. Me. And that is like, I just, you know, when you just don't want to be a part of the narrative, but you're brought in. Yeah. But then I have I to even, take responsibility and say, okay, people look at me as the face of this. So let me, let me speak out. Mm-hmm. I just always want to do the right thing. And you always have to just do what feels right. Mm-hmm. And you just can't, take on all that extra energy mm-hmm. whole bunch of nothing whole bunch of nothing but again she kind of said it herself at the end there people see me as the face of this thing so i have to maybe step up and say something because i i can sympathize in the point of view of like i had this podcast where essentially i forced myself to have hot takes and stuff that i generally probably don't care about but to make an interesting show, you kind of just have to force yourself to kind of have a hot take or to have something to say about something that happened in culture. I can understand from her point of view, being in, a, it being in a place where, you know what, I do so much on social. The last thing I want to do is contribute on top of the stuff that I contribute to on social with my opinions on things that are happening that don't even concern me. Because if it's concerning me, it's already annoying because people extrapolate and you know and sort of like read into things that probably aren't even there but how much worse would it be for kim if she decided to weigh into all these things happening in culture right when it becomes relationships family all this we already see what happened when she started to talk about hard work and stuff and how did the internet react so negatively towards it it just isn't going to win you're not going to win it's not going to work so i understand sympathize for that point of view but by the same token you can't understand oh people see you as balenciaga's face and then also get annoyed when people don't when people try to ask you for a response or push you to respond to things when it involves children, when you're out there on the internet all the time trying to LARP as a single mom of four, you kind of have to expect that. And also, people maybe expected, again, a more visceral response, and we didn't get it because they're soulless. And that's okay. That's okay also because I think the, the more mature you become in life, the more um, life experiences you end up having, the sooner you probably realize that this thing that they do is a talent and a skill in itself. You know, you already know, I know for myself how difficult it is to self-promote, how difficult it is for me to record a vlog with a camera in my hand outside talking to myself in the streets. I know how difficult it is to keep uploading fucking videos of myself DJing on social media and how cringe it feels to basically be this dancing monkey and show, look, look how cool I am, look how cool I am. It doesn't come naturally to any of us who are quote unquote normal. But to them, to people who do exist on social media, who do think of themselves as a weird modern version of royalty, this comes natural. It is part of parcel of their life. So I can understand where in order to kind of be at the zenith, at the top, at the pinnacle of where they are, you can't have a soul. You can't have um, any part of you be like a regular human you just can't it just can't exist i think there's an interview she says one bit where oh my kids are amazing they're just like regular people they're regular ki-. like she just keeps saying something about their how normal they are how normal they are and i can really em- empathize with that's probably the realest moment like she says something actual like a real thing because it probably shocks her that these kids have come out so normal despite her being so lacking in her soul and being so dead behind the eyes because she has to be that way in order to kind of do the job that she's doing, right? Or to kind of fulfill this destiny that she has to become the most famous person in the world, wherever it may be. This is part and parcel of her life. You can't have a soul and do that job because it would just weigh you down and it would not allow you to do the things that she's done because you would be second guessing yourself or be thinking that's cringe that's corny that's lame that's a bit ott what message am i sending nah there is no message there is no sending you just do what you do you cash your checks and you keep it going so that makes complete sense but god almighty god almighty the lack of um the lack of self-awareness is pretty frightening. The lack of um, understanding is really weird as well. Especially when you consider this woman's like in her 40s or something. You're like, God almighty, why? So you have no idea why people were pushing you for a comment regarding the Blenciaga kids BDSM toy things? Like, no idea? It doesn't it does involve me? Okay, cool. It doesn't involve you. No worries. That's, that's the only reason why you shouldn't be talking about it. Because it doesn't involve you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. 